Revelation chapter 18. This is the last we're fixing to see of Babylon. It's because it's getting ready to go. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. So this is a big time angel. Isn't it? He cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, is become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. You see, you see that a lot in scripture. Some of these birds are kind of associated, associated with the enemy, the devil. Remember that uh, parable Jesus told about the four soils, that hard ground, the birds, the fowls of the air would swoop in and take it up. And after he explained it, he says, the devil takes that word away from you before you can even hear it or believe it. <clears throat> but it says, All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through her the abundance of her delicacies. So whatever this Babylon is, the whole world has benefited from it. It's like the golden goose. We're going to see that throughout this whole chapter, how that it falls, but it pays a lot of attention to all the people that was, you know, in bed with this part this city this system whatever this is and they just wail over it because you know the golden goose lays eggs no more you know it says uh i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins so there's still a few a remnant left in there come out you know god's getting his people out you see that a lot even in in the worldly events if you've got ambassadors all over the world and you're getting ready to go to war with one of them the first thing you do you pull your people out don't you it says that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues kind of like uh, israel didn't have to suffer through the plagues of egypt even though they was right there he's going to get these people out so they don't have to deal with that it says for her sins have reached unto heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. We talked again about that space to repent, but there always comes that closing time when it's done deal. And this is a done deal for this city here. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. So it's going to be bad. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit a queen. I'm no widow and shall see no sorrow. People live in their own little world sometimes, don't they? Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, famine, and she shall utterly burn, be burned with fire. For strong is the Lord who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise any more. They liked all this stuff. There's a whole laundry list of stuff here. The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, thyme wood, whatever that is, all manner of vessels of ivory and precious wood, brass, iron, marble, cinnamon, odors, ointments, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horses, chariots, and slaves, and souls of men, slaves, and you know that there's still slaves in the world even today, isn't that pitiful? And that's, before I move on, that's something atheists like to bring up about the Bible. Well, God was for slavery. He condoned slavery. Listen, this Bible isn't just about do's and don'ts for God. This Bible also shows the wickedness of the heart of man. God certainly made provision for servants in here. And his version of that, really, if you look into it, it boils down to like a form of welfare, really. But what you're talking about when you think of slavery, there's a word for that in here, too. It's called men stealers. And it's punishable by death. God did not like that. He was not for that. Got that out of the way. The fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them 
no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, that's bad when you, you, your income's coming in and it's, a lot of people make money. The Bible refers to it as uh, filthy lucre, dirty money. They make it by nefarious means and committing fornication with this ungodly place here. Now it's done, and that's all you see in here. They'll just be wailing and mourning because, you know, it's no more. Instead of turning to God and repenting, you know, they're just sitting there crying over, you know, all this bad stuff. Anyway, it says, uh, they say, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple, scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught. Every shipmaster, every company and ships, sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off. So this is a port city. You, you can get to it through the sea. That could still make it be a, about every place I've named already. It says, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust <clears throat> on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. That reminds me again of that fifth seal when the souls under the altar were crying for vengeance. God said, rest a little while, I got it. Another place, he says, vengeance is mine. This is it. This is the vengeance of God finally being poured out. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers, trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee. No craftsman of whatsoever crafty be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Millstone, we sing that a couple times. <clears throat> it's just like if you've ever seen that big giant rock in the old timey days, that's what they would grind, grind out flour and wheat and corn and all that stuff to make your meal. We've already seen that it's going to get so bad that it was going to cost a day's wages for like a loaf of bread here. It's all over. You can't even get that no more because there'll be the sound of a millstone no more. It says, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of a bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. <clears throat> For by their sorce thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Thy sorceries. That word's in there. I looked it up. It's just in there three times. This particular word. Pharmakia. Sounds familiar. It sounds like pharmacy, doesn't it? So it means uh, sorceries twice. It means witchcraft once. And as far as I can tell, I don't looked into it too much. I think a lot of these people that practice witchcraft and that kind of stuff, they, they like dealing with herbs and that kind of stuff, mind-altering substances to get together and do these things. And so that can have a double meaning there with drugs and whatnot. But by it, they deceived the nations, it said. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Is that all, everybody, everywhere? No, it's just talking about everybody that got slain in this, wherever they're at here, in Babylon. And that's it. That's chapter 18. Show up tomorrow. We'll try and close out with 19. It's getting good because we're fixing to see the real, the, the real white horse rider come to town. Amen. See you then.